If you are a quilt maker, do you have scraps? Well, of course you do. Every quilt maker develops scraps. As soon as you start cutting up your fabric, you end up with smaller pieces, odd shaped pieces, and those we call scraps. So how do you work with those? Do you want to work with them? Do you know how to store them? Do you know how to use them in the future? I'm Pat Sloan, and this is my series on getting our studio organized, our workspace usable and happy so that we can get in there and sew and be productive. And each of my videos has a theme on this series. And this one is about our scraps and how do we think about them so that we can deal with them and use them most efficiently for us. Everybody works differently and we don't all process and like to make the same things. So I'm going to ask a series of questions here in this video, get you thinking about how you use scraps, and then I'll give you some suggestions on ways that you can store them and in the future use them. Because we do love our fabric. Quilters buy more fabric than any other product in our quilt making arsenal. That, that is the one thing we own a lot of. So I keep mine in the bins. That's in another video there. So you can go take a look at that. And a scrap, uh, you know, sometimes people, particularly if somebody's new to quilt making, they're not really sure what a scrap is. And they'll read things and somebody will say, and I think they do it sort of tongue in cheek. They'll go, oh, a fat quarter is a scrap because I only buy yardage. That doesn't really, I mean, this is a fat quarter bundle. You know, this to me is usable. This is working fabric. This is not scraps. After I start cutting into one of these, this is what might end up having. This would be a scrap. So that is what we're talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. What we're talking about is these smaller pieces that we end up with. Here's another one that's, they're, they're, they're big, some of them. This is bigger than this one. But they're also not, <clears throat> they're not huge. So it isn't like you have, you know, like a half a yard of this. You know, this might be it, and it might be 10 or 12 years old, and you aren't gonna find any more of it. So, and you can't really plan an entire quilt around using this piece of fabric. And that is what the thought about scrap quilts comes in. So we have bins. And if you're going to tidy up your bins and get them nice and organized and neat, these little pieces get lost. They just, they'll get jammed down in there. They'll be stuck between things. They'll fall to the bottom and be all balled up. Uh, and they're not usable that way. So I don't keep these with my regular, I call it the regular fabric. I take these smaller pieces, the scraps, and I will do something with them. Whoop, not throw them on the floor. <laughs> but we're going to talk about that. So first, you need to decide what, what type of quilt maker are you? Do you like to make scrap quilts? Do you actually make scrap quilts? You might say, yeah, I like to make scrap quilts, but do you actually make them? Look at what you're making. Do you say, oh my gosh, I've got to make a quilt with blue, but I need about 40 different shades of blue and 40 different fabrics, and this is going to be so much fun. Or do you go, I'm going to make a quilt, and I'm going to use this gorgeous new bundle of fabric I just got, and it's all coordinated, and it goes together, and so pretty. You know, this is the kind of quilt you want to make. If you are, first of all, let's talk about it. If you really don't gravitate to finding 40 different little scraps of fabric and you know you can't get any more of this this is all it is and you know if, if this is the kind of quilt that you make if you make these kind of quilts then you are going to want to have sort of a more elaborate system for tracking and keeping these small pieces because you do use them but if you're the person who is like, not nah, this is it. When I go to make a quilt, I want to get a bundle. I want to get a, some yardage. I want it all to be like, you know, 12 pieces of fabric that coordinate, go with the pattern. And, uh, but these you own. So there's, I would call these like a controlled scrappy person. You know, like maybe you'll sometimes make a scrap quilt, but it'll be like pretty controlled in color. And you mostly are just going to get things that are very coordinated. So I, wanna, I want you to really be honest with yourself on that one because 
it's sort of, I think in the quilt making world, sometimes it's kind of noble to say, oh, I'm a scrap quilter, you know, because that means you're using up everything, all these little pieces. But if you really aren't and you're saving all of this, it's just taking up your precious space, taking up your mental space for no reason. You aren't going to use it. So let me give you an example of uh, space wise. Let's talk a little bit about what, um, what kind of shapes you know you could work with and how much space cutting these things down into that would take now you don't have to cut it you could just have your bin of big fabric like this and then you could have a separate container maybe like a shoe box like these that you could stack and then you could just put these in there as is you could just stack them not cut that would be one way not cut you just say okay here's all the scraps so here would be the blue scraps i would put this all of these blue scraps in one of these all these yellows in one of these all these blues in one of these so start thinking about that if you have one of these for every color let's say you're going to do 12 colors you're going to need 12 of these boxes here's just two boxes this the amount of storage you need if you're going to need 12 of those you need space and that doesn't count the space you've already got for these, your regular fabric, which are big pieces. That's the really basic way of separating them. Bigger pieces, little pieces. So if you look down here, you know, this, this could be just your blue, but you probably have a lot more blue. You might have two or three of these, and then you might have two whole things of this of blue scraps. That's a lot of space, and that's just blue. You haven't even gone on to the other colors yet. So I want you to get this sort of this visual of space because most of us don't have unlimited space to store what we're working with. And so we want to really store what we will use. And if, uh, if these aren't going to be used or they're going to be used sparingly, like you just can't bear to get rid of all of it, but you want to have some, I'll give you a suggestion. I'll give you a couple suggestions here on what you can do. So the first thing I, I want us to think about is common sizes of fabric that you can cut these down into for future scrap quilts. So there are already pre-cuts that you purchase, like we did the Fat Quarter Bundle. Um, that was what this was. This is a, called a pre-cut, it's a Fat Quarter Bundle. But we have other pre-cut sizes. There are um, layer cakes, which are 10 inch squares. So you could cut scraps into 10 inch squares, just like this pre-cut is. There are five inch squares, like my Bonnie Lane's. Uh, it's a charm pack. And then there's jelly rolls, which are two and a half inch strips by width of fabric. And jelly rolls are really popular. Um, I'm not talking about storing them. I'm talking about them as a size for your scraps. So that means if I wanted to cut scraps for future jelly, make my, my own jelly roll, you know, or make my own charm pack, make my own layer cake, that is like three different sizes, two and a half by width of fabric, five inch squares, and 10 inch squares. So that's three different sizes that you could do. And the great thing about using these pre-cut sizes is that there are lots of pattern books like these two, I mean, there are hundreds of pattern books and single patterns to use pre-cuts. So here's like for five inch squares, for 10 inch squares, and here's a whole book uh, from Martingale about strip quilts, which are two and a half inch strips. So you have zillions of patterns if you want to pre-cut your scraps into these three different strips that are already have tons of patterns out there that you could purchase or or you might already own you probably already own them or you can get them for free online the thing is let's talk about space again if you're going to take these three sizes and make containers for them a container for two and a half inch strips a container for five inch squares a container for ten inch squares um, you know that is a lot of containers. Are you going to have 10 inch squares and just have everything in one? You know, you could put 10 inch squares in these. You know, they would work out really well in these containers. You could just stack, but then it wouldn't be by color. 
So would you make a bunch of these by color? They're going to take up a lot of space. If that is what you like, yeah, that is my love. I love taking all these fabrics and putting them into one quilt, that that's my love. Then you want to look at storing not only your main fabrics here, but these scrap storage systems, which means you're going to need a lot of space, a lot of space to have all of that. Or you could just minimize it. If you're someone who is like, no, I'm mostly using, I'm mostly using a collection or I'm mostly using a preset group of fabrics that I've went and purchased, the yardage, that's how I work. But when it's done, I end up with a piece like this and I really, I'm not really ready to throw this away. Um, then you could do the thing where you just take all of these blues, you know, just as they are, fold them neatly and put them in a container like this, you know, or put them in this shoe box. Or you could do something like I'm doing. And I'm taking a different size than those three. I'm going with a two and a half inch square. And what I'm doing is I take and cut things into two and a half inch squares. And that way I have this um, uh, whole array of of two and a half inch squares that I can work with. Because what I do is make very specific, right now, this is in, in this season of my life, in this season as a quilt maker, I'm not making a ton of scrap quilts. So what I'm doing is making them from these sort of um, little pieces that I call like free quilts. And I sew these as I start and end other patchwork. So they're kind of an ongoing. And I've talked about this before, I had some, uh, it, within some of my uh, fireside chat videos, but I want to show you real specifically how I do that. Now you can buy mini charms, you know, that some of the companies put out little two and a half inch square packets, Moda does that. But also your jelly roll is two and a half inch strip. You just cut those, any extras off. Your charm, if you have extra charms, you cut those into four two and a half inch squares and then your layer cakes get it cut, it can get cut into a whole bunch more two and a half inch squares. Four, um, it's 16 I think, two and a half inch squares. If you had like one piece of a 10 inch square left or you had something like this, which you could cut into two and a half inch strips. It's all about, for me it's all about the storage. How are you going to store this? Because it's, if it's neat and tidy and flat, it will take up less space. So you want to get that going into your containers. So here are like this one, I, let me just pull this down here. So I have got all kinds of colors in here because I don't have as many oranges or pinks or here's grays, black, pathetic little purple pile. I have hardly any purple two and a half inch squares. Here's yellow. I don't know why there's brown and green on top. They're in the wrong place. Um, but that's in, this is in this shoe box. The first one I showed you was all the um, beige fabrics. And then what I do is I have right now two different ways that I make quilts from this. I am doing, um, and I've done several full quilts like this, which are just a colorway. So this is a red, all different reds and all different whites. You could do, um, you know, I, I just make it all scrappy so that I'm using up like all of these squares from this one, all of these light colors, and then I have a whole red, a whole red bin of pieces. And this quilt, I'm almost getting ready to, it's getting pretty big. Um, I've done green, I've done light color pastels, I've done other colors. And then I also have uh, a block called the, um, called the traffic jam. And this is one where it's a single block and then I make it, eventually I make a bunch of them and I put four together with a sashing like this. There we go. And then eventually these all go together. And these could, right now I'm doing one with all these dark blues and lots of scrappy lights. And here I have four and a half inch squares that go with it and then eventually some two and a half inch strips. So I'm using a bunch of different sizes for it. But the four and a half inch squares, I just go and cut. I go into the light color bins and say, you know, what can I cut up that's small? You know, and I'll just put that into there to, to use it up. So those are the two different types of quilts that I'm making with 
the two and a half inch squares, which is another, it's an easy option because what I'm doing is just these shoe boxes. I have a whole set of them. Once the shoe box gets pretty full, like right now I'm doing the blue for this traffic jam. And I have this little basket right on the side of my sewing machine filled with the squares. And here's some rectangles I cut for future. So I actually, I have a whole stack and I will just sew these as I'm sewing other things and make make these blocks. Like right now I have a, a level, quite a few of these blocks and I need to get them up on the design wall and see like how big is this getting? Is it getting to the point where I might just finish it up and make it a quilt and then start with a different colorway that I have in here? So I hope this gives you a way to think about your scraps. And I would say, so here's sort of your assignment. Number one, is how much space do you have? Number two is how devoted are you to making scrap quilts? You know, I've taught a lot around the country and I always ask people, are you a scrap quilter? And then we go a little deeper. Do you really make scrap quilts? Do you make scrap quilts? Like I call them hardcore scrap quilts where you put everything in one quilt, like the Disney fabric and the Civil War fabric and the baby fabric and the bright neon fabric. And most people are like, eh. So I call that controlled scrappy, which would be something like this, where you're much more color coordinated. So it's nice and soothing and isn't sort of all over the place. But you know, everybody has what will work for you, but you need to, you need to know that first. First, you need to know what it is you like to make and then how much storage, just like a two part, then how much storage do you have to devote to pre-cutting everything up? Because once you pre-cut it, you need to put it in a container because it will be a freaking mess if you don't do this. If you have just just sort of throw stuff in a bag. I mean, people will show me like a like a plastic bag of just scraps, and it's like that takes up probably ten times more space than if it was folded neatly and laid flat. So at a minimum, you can make a bin of these. You could just make a blue bin. You don't want to think about what size it'll be. Maybe you love applique and that's really where that would work. Just put them in there. All right. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. How, tell me in the comments, either at Facebook where you're watching this or here at YouTube, at my website where you're watching it. Uh, tell me how you think about your scraps. What, what goes, what do you do with them? What is your love of scraps? And don't have guilt. If you decide, you know, I really don't want to keep these, you know, maybe this one's like, I just don't want to keep it. Put it in a tote bag and find somebody you can give it to. There are people who will use it. The people who make like dog beds with them or people who make charity quilts <clears throat> and they're more than happy to take these and they will use them. And that way they're out for somebody to actually use rather than taking up precious space in your, in your home because you don't have room. And if you have an outbuilding, <clears throat> work on getting all that stuff back into your house in one place because how often are you going over to your outbuilding to look for your fabric? Maybe you are. Tell me. I want to know about it. I want to see the video. <laughs> I'm Pat Sloan. Thank you so much. I'm going to link you to a few things here. Uh, and I thank you for using my links because it supports our small family business. When you use my links, it doesn't cost you anything else. It's exactly the same. Money is if you didn't use my link, but you support us because we receive a small commission off of the sale. And I will be so excited to see your progress. You can leave pictures here at my website and you can leave pictures over at my Facebook group. Okay, time to get those scraps organized. All right. <laughs>